What's going on everybody? Welcome back to DevSlopes. Today I want to bring you guys something special. This is how any programmer can get a job in 2024. So we already know stuff's going on with the market. People are worried. If we just take a look at Reddit and type in coding job market, we're going to see a lot, a lot of scary things. If the job market for programmers is really that bad, reasons why this job market is horrible. Concerns about the future programming job market. And guys, when we look at this, we see a lot of people worried about what's going on. But guys, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm here to provide you guys with relief and show you guys the secret we teach our students at DevSlopes in order to help them land jobs. And guys, I understand. Anytime you go and try and look for help and you look up how to get a job in programming with no experience, this is the type of advice you're seeing. Improve your coding skills, create a portfolio, build your online presence, network with other programmers, earn certifications, build projects, write a strong resume. All of this is just fluff, just fluff pieces that provide you no value. So I want this video to be a deep dive in on what you actually need to do, how you actually build a portfolio that stands you out from competitors, how you actually improve your coding skills, in which ways that align with what employers are looking for and what projects you need to be looking at. So let's talk about what it's like going into the job market for a programmer. There's this thing, I'm sure everybody has heard of it. We at DevSlopes call this the professional gap. Now, what is the professional? professional gap. The professional gap is this. You need the job to get experience and you need experience to get the job. Now, this is kind of a paradox, right? This makes no sense. How am I able to get a programming job if I don't have any experience? And how am I supposed to get experience if I don't have a programming job? We see this all the time. If we look at job requirements, they're always saying three to five years of experience, or you need to have worked in a professional environment for three plus years. And, and it throws you guys for a loop because it's like, okay, how am I supposed to meet this? And a lot of the times you see those things, you get discouraged and you don't even apply for the job. This is such a not a new thing. It's so common, people make memes about it. Look at this, we are looking for someone aged 22 to 26 with 30 years of experience. Like this is, this is a common thing in the programming industry. This is all the more reason not to take this seriously. And so this poses the question, how do you get paid experience without a job? How are you supposed to make money in coding to show that you have experience if you can't get a job? This is the secret, freelancing. Now before you guys rush off this video and say, what the hell are you talking about? This is, please get away. I'm not gonna become a freelancer. Just, just, just listen, just listen. This is how we at DevSlopes use freelancing for our students in order to leverage them into high paying jobs. And we've landed students at some of the best careers out there. We're talking Apple, Spotify, Intuit, Airbnb, Facebook, and many, many more. I want you to take a step back for a moment. I want you to have an open mind for the rest of this video. So freelancing, this is the game of freelance. And I want you to understand how freelancing can benefit you if you do it properly. So first step is to find the freelance work. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. The next step is to sell yourself. Now this is a process within itself. Let's be frank, a lot of us programmers have problems when it comes to communication. We like to lone wolf it, trust me, I'm the same way. We like to do things on our own. We don't really like to talk to people. But this is important. This is very important because these skills not only apply to freelancing, but they apply to the skills you need in the current job industry. But guys, you need to be able to sell yourself because you're not only gonna have to sell yourself in freelancing, you're gonna have to sell yourself when it comes to getting a job. You have to stand out from the crowd. You have to stand out from the crowd because odds are when you're looking at these potential freelance projects, they're gonna be getting five to 15 to 20 to 50 proposals sent to them all the time. And you need to be able to stand yourself out from the crowd. And guys, trust me, I know this is a lot to take in right now. We're gonna dive into all of this. So after you stand out from the crowd, you're gonna score. And the way that you score is by this. You're leveraging freelance work to showcase employers that you have paid experience. I want you to put this in your head for a moment. You have person A who has a bunch of Udemy certifications from coding courses, maybe a bachelor's degree, but no work experience. And you have person B who has three to five paid portfolio projects that they were paid for from freelancing that they can put on their resume. Who's gonna get hired? The person with actual paid experience. See, this is the gap. This is the professional gap. 
And this is how you bridge that gap by showing employers, hey, I have paid experience. Whereas someone who maybe just has a computer science degree or someone who just has Udemy certifications or knows a couple languages, they're not gonna have anything to show for themselves. So what do those projects look like? This is where I want you to listen close. I am not saying it is time to go out and become a freelancer. I am not saying you need to go out and land $1,500 retainer projects from three to five clients that pay you for the next six months. That is not what I'm saying. Although that would be awesome, and you could definitely do that if you wanted to, I understand that 90% of you guys aren't wanting to become freelancers. 90% of you guys want the luxury of having job security, want the luxury of being able to work remotely and not have to worry about these kinds of things, want to not have to worry about doing your own taxes. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So listen close because I'm about to show you exactly what these projects look like. So when we're looking at a site like Upwork, I want you guys to do something simple. We're just gonna look at WordPress developers. Now, I don't want you to think, I'm not a WordPress developer, I don't know what to do. Guys, if you're learning programming and if you've been in the journey of learning programming long enough, you can learn WordPress and leverage the skills that you've learned in programming and apply them to WordPress skills. So if we look at WordPress developer, we can see that a lot of these projects are not too crazy. Here's one for example. Web developer needed for creating an interactive car affordability calculator. Knowledge of web development languages include HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Proficiency with JavaScript frameworks such as React is preferred. Guys, these are, these are all the languages that are industry standard, and if you guys are trying to become a web developer, you should be learning these languages already. Fixed price, $150. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You're not looking for a $1,500 retainer project. Guys, you're looking for simple projects like this. Simple projects that you can use to put on your portfolio, to put on your portfolio. I'm not telling you to use these projects to help pay your bills, which they can, but I'm telling you to use these projects to put on your portfolio. Here's another one, for example, experienced website developer for nutrition and wellness business. They're asking you to make a simple website for a nutrition and wellness business. Fixed price, $350. Guys, these are the projects you can be looking at that you can put on your resume and say, guys, this is my paid work, I have experience. Now, standing out from the crowd, what does that exactly look like? Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but I will say that there are easy ways that you can stand out from the five to 10 to 50 proposals that are put out on these projects. Now, I want you to think about for a second what it's like for an employer to recruit a software developer. Everyone is sending the same resume. And I mean that legitimately. Everyone is showing their little certi certifications from Udemy. Everyone's sh showing off their bachelor's degree in computer science. Everybody's putting their calculator apps in their resume. They're seeing the same thing every single time. And so by showing something different, by standing out with paid work, it's gonna put you in a much better position. Now, I want you to also think about something that you might not know because a lot of people, they look at jobs and they get discouraged. For example, let's look at this job from Indeed. People can look at this and easily be like, one year code development experience with PHP. Oh, I don't know PHP, I'm gonna stop right there. And they don't apply for the job. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Apply for the job anyway. Why is that? Because there's something you guys may not know. A lot of the times when jobs are looking for developers, they reach out to recruiters and those recruiters are not programmers. They know nothing about programming. They just know, okay, I'm supposed to look for a developer. Well, let me find the best developer out there. And so what do they do? They go to Google and they type in best programming languages for web development. Oh, they see this big list here. They see this big list here. They say, okay, Python, okay, PHP, okay, Java, okay, Swift, okay, Ruby, okay, C Sharp. And they put all of those on the job requirements. And that's why the joke is that there's so many job requirements. Because guys, 90% of the stuff on those job requirements are not things you're gonna be doing. They might ask you to have all this information and be able to do all of these things, but in reality, you're gonna be ma making the buttons bigger on websites. This is why I'm telling you guys, when you see job requirements like this, don't get discouraged. Now, don't go overkill. If you look for a job and it says iOS developer needed, must know Swift, and you're a front-end web developer, obviously you shouldn't apply for the job. But when you see jobs like this where you can look at it and be like, you know, I know this and you know, um, they're used PHP, but you know, I, I, I could probably dabble into that. I don't feel like I need to know too much of that. I know what a web developer does. If you really read what they're looking for, you might be able to say, you know what, I don't know all of these things, but I'm gonna apply anyway because I know I can bring value to this team. That's the mentality you wanna have. And trust me, 
Trust me, once you get on the job, the other developers aren't gonna expect you to all know these things. And everybody knows programming is a learn as you go thing. So I can guarantee you, you're not gonna run to any problems and as you continue to learn as you go on the job, you're gonna be just fine. So that's something to really, really keep in mind and something that maybe can give you guys some relief because there's no need to be stressed out when it comes to coding job requirements. So to recap, how are you supposed to stand out from the hundreds of resumes that are being sent to employers? The answer is freelance projects. Now remember, with freelancing, you're not looking to become a full-time freelancer. You're looking to learn how to work with clients, build your communication skills, make a little bit of cash, but primarily look to put something that you were paid for on your portfolio. Guys, three to five projects minimum. Three to five projects minimum. That's what we do at DevSlopes, where we teach people freelancing, programming, and how to get a job. This is how you bridge the programming gap. This is how you answer the question, how do I get a job if I don't have a experience. This is what you have to do. And guys, that is it. That is it for this video. I wanted to just dive straight into the point because I understand the frustration. You guys understand that the jobs are still out there and they're waiting for you guys to go get them. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. We're going to be talking more about web development, the coding job market, and so much more things with code. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.